Okay. Thank you for joining our CSP Improve-In webinar series. Today's topic will be on BitLocker, simplifying your deployment and management. Uh, we appreciate you attending today's session. We do have um, a quick announcement on our additional sessions of the uh, the series. We do have, um, you, Chris, you wanna <laughs> jump ahead? There we go. Um, we do have uh, additional se sessions coming up in the upcoming months. Our 2021 series has been focused on endpoint management. Uh, our previously recorded sessions are available at the URL here uh, on our website, improvement.com. So you can watch all of our previously recorded sessions. But we do have upcoming sessions that will highlight the remainder of our uh, endpoint management strategy uh, topic for this year. And with that, I will go ahead and hand it off to Chris Ball, who will be our presenter today. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. All right. So go ahead and get over to our agenda. So you know, as you're all aware, attending this meeting, you know, we've been heavily focused on the life cycle and management of our endpoint devices throughout our uh, previous webinars. And so, you know, with BitLocker, you know, we're kind of focusing on part of your uh, your DLP strategy with your endpoints, right? We want to talk about some of the requirements that BitLocker needs. We talk about different ways to, to manage uh, BitLocker, whether you're living in an on-prem environment or you're all cloud or hybrid. Um, and we want to talk about some troubleshooting, do some deployments and do a demo. Um, so without that, we're just going to go ahead and hop right into this here. So I like to always start off, um, our, my presentations anyway, with kind of like, uh, with just a question and see what encryption solutions anyone's using today. Is anyone using BitLocker? Are we using, you know, maybe another product like, uh, TrueCrypt or McAfee? I can say I've seen uh, customers using Sophos and uh, Symantec for drive encryption in the past. I have a few yep. clients using uh, McAfee right now. Uh, McAfee's a McAfee's a really popular, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, encryption suite. I've seen uh, I see that quite a bit as well uh, out in the wild. And uh, there's a lot of cost I think associated with that too, which we'll touch on. So. It goes to our next part, which really, why would you want to use BitLocker if you already got another encryption solution or have no encryption solution, right? Um, you know, there are plenty of reasons to choose BitLocker uh, or any encryption solution for that matter. But uh, you know, maybe you want to require all of your devices to be encrypted to avoid loss of confidential data. Maybe you want to add a pin that the user is required to enter, you know, prior to granting access to Windows, or maybe if you're using a third-party vendor, um, you know, and BitLocker, which is native to Windows, uh, would provide some cost savings benefits. Uh, you know, it's flexible, easy ways to management. It gets rid of additional infrastructure that you may have in place to manage your current encryption solution if it's not uh, if it's not BitLocker. Uh, and I think it it kind of fits into how things are managed in the cloud, especially if you're using leveraging Intune heavily today or Autopilot, which we'll also touch on. So one of the things when we talk about BitLocker, it's important to understand the you know the lifecycle management uh, and how you're you know knowing if your organization's even ready for encryption. You know, so where encryption falls in your DLP strategy and, and understanding the support for your existing fleet of devices. Uh, it's quite common for businesses to have legacy partition devices where encryption isn't supported, or uh, older devices without TPM chips or an unsupported TPM chip. Uh, depending on what your actual strategy is that will greatly affect how uh, your environment is ready to uh, to begin implementing encryption and managing it uh, you know, and understanding how you're going to force your devices to be compliant, how you measure that compliant um, and, and how you handle non-compliant systems will really impact how successful uh, your implementation of encryption will be. You, you may want to talk about how you're going to handle recovery keys. You know, whether you're going to rotate these keys out or just keep a static key. And there's there's options and ways to configure both of those. 
So there really there are three options uh, that Microsoft really has available for you to manage BitLocker. Uh, so before we get into the demo later on, uh, I want to kind of touch on each of these briefly so that you can understand uh, some of the differences. You know, for the purposes of our demo today, we're going to look at primarily focusing on the first option, which is managing BitLocker with uh, with Intune and Azure. So if you are a enterprise that has that is leveraging on premise management only, you have no uh, no Intune or no cloud infrastructure uh, really to speak of, um, you know, Microsoft still wants you to have those devices in a co-managed state, you know, but if you're not there yet, um, you know, support scenarios where cloud is not an option, you know, Microsoft's added, you know, BitLocker management through Configuration Manager current branch. Uh, if you're familiar with that at all, I think it was build uh, 1910, um, where Microsoft enabled all of the BitLocker management functionality uh, with SCCM that was previously in MBAM, and we're going to talk about MBAM and its uh, retirement here in a bit. Um, but similar to the Intune's cloud-based approach, encryption keys, policies, et cetera, are all managed within SCCM, and the keys are stored uh, in the SCCM database. If you're leveraging reporting, reporting is kind of similar. Um, if you're used to using reporting within MBAM, uh, that, is also, uh, that also is pretty similar to what you're used to within SCCM. So when you're trying to retrieve your keys with BitLocker in, in, in an SCCM, you still have the good old uh, BitLocker administration monitoring web page. It's just a, now it's just a, a something you enable on your primary site in SCCM, and then you have a web page that you go to similarly to what you used to have with uh, with MBAM and the standalone uh, BitLocker solution that Microsoft used to provide. And there was a self-service portal and the administration portal for accessing your keys, and Microsoft moved both of them over to SCCM, which is really nice because a lot of people get nervous, I think, when you transition from a standalone product to something that's more integrated, you want that familiarity. And uh, they were nice enough to uh, keep all of that together when they moved it over to uh, SCCM. Another alternate way that you can grab BitLocker keys uh, from SCCM would be through SQL. Now, this is more of an obscure way uh, to access it, but if you're having issues with your portals or um, anything like that, it does give you another way to grab a key. Uh, you know, I would only recommend this really as a last resort, or if you're doing need to export these keys for some reason uh, for all of your devices. Um, but I wouldn't use it as a standard for managing your keys at all. Um, and as you can see in the screenshot here, because I don't have a live environment to show you, um, this query is really just looking for uh, any device that has recovery keys and is encrypted and matches a name with uh, the word surface in it. So MBAM, which uh, was around since, wow, 2011, I think, um, really when Windows 7 when encryption needed to be really managed with uh, Windows 7, it's been around for a long time. And that was kind of a standard, uh, standalone, sorry, uh, in encryption management and monitoring tool. Um, it, had, it had requirements for dedicated on-prem infrastructure, including database servers. It, had a, it was very heavy on uh, the requirements for your on-prem infrastructure to make this manageable. And uh, now that that's been kind of deprecated, as you saw in SCCM, they have moved a lot of that, uh, all of the functionality actually from MBAM, the standalone version back to SCCM. And that if you're using uh, MBAM, the standalone version today, um, that support ends on July 9th, 2024. Back uh, in July of 2019, it moved on to extended support. and. Now that Microsoft has multiple ways to manage and uh, handle BitLocker, uh, all of that uh, is kind of going away for the standalone version. So, but really, I mean, BitLocker management, BitLocker is really Microsoft's still their main, uh, their only encryption option. And that's really what they recommend, whether you use an Intune or Configuration Manager. So, like I said, Intune and MEM is going to be our primary focus for our demo. Um, 
But uh, Intune Azure, in my opinion, is probably the best way to manage your keys if you have uh, if you have an on-prem environment. I still like to keep all of that saved to uh, to Azure. It just makes it simpler, and you can store your keys to a device in Azure AD if you have Azure AD only joined devices or hybrid Azure AD joined. Um, you can integrate your encryption policies with Autopilot for those that are leveraging it. Um, and we're going to talk about autopilot, autopilot. I can't talk today. Autopilot specifically next month in our uh, upcoming CSP webinar. So be sure to stay tuned for that. So in Azure, when we talk about where the keys get stored, and we're going to go through this again, like I said in the demo, but um, you know most of it gets attached to the device object. So when you look at a device, you'll see. Um, and you look at the properties of that device, you'll see an option for the BitLocker key and the recovery key you can view. Um, you can see all of that right from the Azure AD object uh, within uh, Azure AD. Once that uh, key is generated for the device, it saves, to the, it saves it to that device object. And uh, you can also choose to rotate those devices and we'll show you how to set up rotation of keys uh, later. So there are some basic requirements for BitLocker in the cloud, and it assumes you have all of the licensing and hardware needed uh, to store your BitLocker keys and manage your devices with Intune. Um, you were talking Windows 10 19.9 or later, uh, whether it's uh, pro, enterprise, or education. Um, technically, uh, Windows 10 18.03 and 18.09 and later are supported or were supported when those uh, systems were supported by Microsoft, but it's you definitely want to be on at least 1903 and later simply because there were some bugs with 1803 and 1903 or 1803 and 1809 and up until i think it was 1809 um rotation of the encryption keys were not supported so once you had a key saved to your device for your device uh within uh azure ad uh, that key couldn't be rotated upon use and then you also have your uh, licensing that's required, whether it's an E3 or E5 license, and then an Azure AD premium license. And of course, the device has to be enrolled into Intune. So, you know, the OS has kind of a requirement as well, right? Um, it's a good rule of thumb to build your strategy around your hardware and software combinations. So you need to understand what your environment looks like. Um, you know, if you have devices with a single contiguous uh, partition that's maybe master boot record only, um, you know, your devices are going to need to be converted to GPT before BitLocker can be enabled if it's a single partition. Um, and GPT partitions, uh, you know, if you have, uh, if you need to do that, there is a tool that you can run. Um, it's like MBR to GPT. Um, we're not going to do that as part of the demo today, but know that that tool does exist. Uh, and you can push that out to your devices to kind of convert those uh, convert your partitions to the proper partitions needed. Um, TPM, you know, we're talking about versions 1.2 or higher or 2.0 and later. If uh, if you have a TPM chip that's only 2.0 or later, uh, keep in mind that that only supports BIOS and UEFI mode. You can't enable legacy BIOS on a system with a TPM with a TPM 2.0 chip only. And then lastly, obviously, you want UEFI firmware um, that uh, supports that gives you um, the ability to support things like secure boot. Well, the high level deployment steps are really straightforward from Azure AD. You need a device configuration profile. Uh, you need to deploy that profile to an Azure AD group that your device needs to be a member of. And you need to have uh, just go in and simply update the client policy and wait for that policy to apply and the disk will begin to encrypt. Now, if there are some hardware issues or uh, things that allow, don't allow that device to be encrypted, um, we'll talk about some ways that you can kind of troubleshoot what's happening with BitLocker encryption to see uh, if it's working, not working and where it's failing. Um, but those are really the only things you you need in order to uh, enable encryption on your device, uh, provided the hardware and everything supports it. It's three very simple steps. Um, if you've got uh, net new devices, um, your 
BitLocker policies can apply with an endpoint security policy, so you would want to have that configured as well. Um, you need an autopilot deployment profile, and again, there would be an Azure AD group that those items, that those uh, policies and profiles would be configured uh, and connected to most likely your um, your autopilot deployment group that you set up during uh, enrollment. And with that, we're going to get into our demo here. So let me go ahead and go ahead and share our virtual machine here. Give me one second. All right, so um, they're going to kind of actually, I think instead of doing that, I'm just going to share my desktop. So let me know if you guys can see this desktop uh, because it may it may be difficult to see because of the resolution of my display. So give me one second here. Right. Are you able to see that OK? Is it real tiny? That's not too bad. Not too bad? OK. What if, uh, how does the Windows OS look? I look OK? That looks really clear. OK. All right, so so here we are. This is our machine. We're logged in to our demo tenant here. Um, we are, as you can see here, you look at the disk. Uh, the disk has no encryption enabled at this time. Um, it is part of uh, it is part of our um, Intune. It's part of our Intune settings setup, and we are part of the Contoso network, which is always part of the demo. Uh, environment. So from there, you really need to, to do something very simple, which is just configure the uh, the policy first. So we go into configuration profile, and then we will create a profile. Then we need to choose whatever platform that is. Uh, since this is going to be Windows 10 and later, we're going to choose that, and we're going to select a profile type, and that's buried under uh, templates. Scroll down here, we've got an option for endpoint encryption. Okay, and then when we're done with that, we click create. Once we get here, um, that will take you to the basic wizard and you want to give this uh, this thing a name. So we'll call this locker dash demo. And I highly recommend giving things a description. Think about this as like commenting your code. If you're setting something up, you'll make everyone's life easier if you put in a description for what this policy actually does. So we'll just call this the primary uh, enterprise encryption policy or whatever you want to call it. All right. And then we'll go ahead and click next. We look at this, we've got all kinds of different options here that we can configure. Since this is all about encryption, we're going to kind of expand uh, Windows encryption here. And that gives us a lot of different options. Um, so when we talk about this, this is where you need to make sure that as an enterprise, you understand what your strategy is supposed to look like. Um, are you going to allow standard users to enable encryption? You need to do that. Um, if you want these things to be silent when you deploy it. Um, you need to understand if you've already got existing encryption in your environment. One thing that will cause your devices to most likely be unusable will be the fact that you're deploying BitLocker encryption on top of another encryption solution. Um, they do not mesh and you will have a rough day if you uh, do that. So, get ready to set all these things up. We just want to make sure that we enable the ability to uh, encrypt our devices. Um, if you're not sure what these settings do, you can kind of hover over the little item, the little eye, and it will tell you, uh, give you a short description. And if you want to learn more about that, obviously there's a link here that you can click. Um, that takes us down to our base settings for BitLocker. So um, if you want this to be silent, um, you do need to enable the block setting here for warn for other disk encryption, okay? Um, and you also want to allow standard users to enable encryption during Azure AD join. 
Now you have a bunch of different encryption methods here. By default, um, when you enable this setting, it's you know your your encryption um, cipher is 120 bit. And you've got some other options here. Um, we'll just leave it at 128 for the purposes of this demo. Make it not complicated. Um, and then if you want to do things like like pre like save these keys to the Azure Active Directory or uh, save them during uh, before the encryption starts, um, you need to go ahead and enable uh, or require authentication, additional authentication at startup. And then if you have devices that don't have like TPM, say, hey, you know what? I'm going to block. I'm going to not allow devices that don't have a compatible TPM to uh, not run encryption. Um, if you have different settings you want to set up for your TPM, whether you want to allow pin or allow startup keys um, or keys and pins, um, that could be anything from a smart card to just a nine digit pin, or you can set the number of characters you want your pin to be. Um, for the purpose of this, we're not going to allow startup pin with TPM, and uh, we're not going to allow that. And do all that. And then we want to go down here and enable OS drive recovery. All right. And so from here, you want to you can choose how many, you know, a 48 digit recovery password or if you want to require it or don't allow it, whatever you want. Um, and when you create the recovery key, it's just the it's just the cipher that has to do with that. Um, so recovery options for BitLocker. Um, you can not configure or block and that's really where you want someone, maybe you want to enable, um, you don't want the person to be able to save a key to a text file to their machine or set up a pin. You can block some of that. Um, we also, we obviously want to save our BitLocker recovery information into Azure Active Directory. And we want to set it to back up the recovery passwords and key uh, packages. Here is the option we talked about in some of our previous slides where we discussed, uh, you know, rotating our passwords. Um, now you can do this for Azure AD devices or Azure AD joined devices. Either one is fine. If you want some sort of pre-boot recovery URL, you can set that up um, or some sort of message uh, when they're, if a person's device gets locked. Now fixed data drives are really, if you have like desktops, for example, that have uh, their primary drive, which is C, and then they have a fixed drive for say, um, you know, just data storage. You see it a lot, maybe with uh, heavy, with big workstations that are very CAD heavy. Um, you may want to, you would want to enable, in my opinion, uh, BitLocker on those fixed data drives. Now we don't have a fixed data drive um, on our VM, but just know that that option is available to you. So, and again, you get the same options you have here. You can allow uh, recovery passwords. Um, all of the same stuff for your C drive. You want to save those recovery keys in Azure AD, you can do that. And um, this is one option here that I really think is a good thing to do. Uh, it, it's storing your recovery information in Azure AD before you enable BitLocker. If in the off chance that the key gets, that the device ends up being BitLocked upon reboot before the key gets saved, this will prevent you from having a machine that's inaccessible. If you have remo removable storage drives, so USB drives, those sorts of things, you can uh, also enable BitLocker uh, on those drives as well. If you want to require that for USB drives, um, you can do that. Once you're done with all your settings, click Next. This is where you want to add a group. Uh, for the, As you can see, we made a group uh, already to make this thing kind of go quick. Uh, that already has our uh, demo device uh, saved to it. And always remember to click select because select, sometimes people will choose that, click X, and then they'll be like, why doesn't it apply? That is exactly why, because you forgot to click select and you didn't see it. Um, I've done it myself, so just be aware of that. Once you're done here, click next. If you want to apply applicability rules, so OS-based uh, information, whether it's Windows 10 Enterprise or uh, Windows 10 education, whatever it is, uh, you can apply all of that. We're not going to apply any of those rules for the purpose of this demo. And click next. And before you create this, 
uh, policy, you get one chance to kind of go through and look at it and go, hmm, do I like these? Do I not like these? Uh, is there anything I want to change? And when you're done, you click create. And I'm pretty sure we assigned that to a profile, but for the purposes of this demo, we'll double check it to make sure I didn't miss anything. Yep, we did. Okay. All right, so once we have this stood up and applied, um, that policy will sync down to our uh, our Windows 10 workstation. Um, just note that you know when we talked earlier about another place that you can enable endpoint security and encryption, you can do it here as well. This is a, a different, the policy here, very similar to the one we created. The one that we just created is for existing devices, and this would be something you would leverage during uh, like an autopilot deployment. So just know that there's two places that you can configure this and you want to make sure that those settings match. And if you need to exclude specific groups or have multiple policies, I highly recommend that you make sure you exclude them from the right policies and come up with a strategy ahead of time before you start deploying uh, BitLocker just to make things easier for you. So let's go ahead and pull up our VM here and see what it's doing. All right. So as you can tell, the last time this thing synced was earlier this morning, and it's still the disk isn't encrypted. So we'll go ahead and click sync. And while we're waiting for that, um, you can look at your uh, always check out your policy under devices profile. Take a look at that, see if there's any devices. And it's going to take a few minutes for this to uh, to sync up and uh, take a look at device status. You can see that its deployment status is still pending, still kind of waiting. Do we have any questions at this point while we're uh, waiting on all of this to sync up? No questions from the chat, but uh, I've got a, a question for you. Yeah, you know, when you were going through the policy setup, it had that checkbox that you recommended to enable to uh, synchronize the recovery key prior to enabling encryption. Mm -hmm. Is there a scenario where you would not want that checkbox enabled? Because it seems like it's a option that, I don't know, from my outsider view, would seem like it would be something you would want to have always done as a safety precaution. Yeah, you know, for me, I feel like it would be a. Uh... I would I feel like it would be something that you'd always want to do. I don't know of a scenario where you wouldn't want to do that. Um, Rick, what about what are your thoughts on that? I would say the only time you may not want to um, enable that is if you're migrating from one encryption utility to another and you just want to make sure that the handoff is clean before you enable that because it could cause problems. So the only time, again, I agree with you, you always want to enable that, but if you're migrating from McAfee or another product, that may be a reason why you want to temper, you don't want to set that uh, immediately. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. In migration scenarios, you can definitely uh, have a rough day. If it, gets, um, it can get tricky, yep. Mm -hmm. For sure. So let's see here. All right, so if we want, we can pop open PowerShell here and take a look, uh, see kind of what's going on, if anything's applying in the background or we've got anything enabled. Um, for those of you, um, so as you can see, the disk is fully decrypted, protection status is off, so the policy hasn't applied to uh, force uh, encryption at all. So we just kind of still have to wait for that. And we did force a sync from the console and to the device. We just got to kind of hang out. If you're trying to understand what um, you know, what your uh, device, how your device is configured, whether it's what version, if it's got a TPM chip or UFI, UEFI, um, there's a couple of different places you can look for that. Um, I typically just pop open uh, MSI info, and uh, as you can see here, we can see that the you know the device, the BIOS mode is UEFI, and you can get more information about uh, the device as well, who's using it, and and so on. Obviously, it's a parallel virtual machine um, that will tell you kind of what your BIOS mode is, which is really nice to uh, to know 
uh, especially if you're trying to figure it out. You can do you can set up reporting um, with SCCM or through. Uh, I think you can do it with um, Intune as well, so you can see what your hardware kind of looks like. A lot of people like to report that information up to say um, to to Power BI. You can do some report really cool reporting stuff with Power BI to get a better look at what your uh, what your environment looks like. So let's see here, because I'm impatient, we'll force another sink here. Now, if you're wondering like what's going on or you have an issue, you can always run an advanced diagnostic report. Click export. Um, when you generate that report, keep in mind that it saves it in a really obscure location. Um, that location happens to be in the uh, MDM diagnostics folder in the public uh, public profile, which is a odd place to save it. But just know that uh, when you export that by default, that's where it saves your saves your uh, your report. You can take a look here. We can see in what version of Windows it is. The last sync, if it was successful. Um, any certificates that we have, um, we can see kind of what uh, it's doing. It's going through provisioning, Windows updates pending. We do have some Windows updates that are hanging out there, so we need to probably maybe we'll just install those and reboot it. You can see that here's the BitLock, here's BitLocker information, device. You can see all of that there. It's encryption's enabled, so on. So you can go through that. Let's see what our disk looks like now here. Right. If you want to force it, um, you, you don't want to do that until your policy applies. Wait until uh, wait until that happens before uh, you force it, because you don't want to end up not being able to save your um, key or the key not get saved in the right place. So let's see here. As you can see, deployment status is still pending. It could be because we have Windows updates, so we'll go ahead and uh, restart that, let that install really quick. I know someone else is working on it. While that's restarting, I have another question for you. Sure. Maybe you kind of touched upon it earlier, but uh, this is all dependent on the device being managed and enrolled within Tune, but it doesn't mean that that it's not also a, a domain joined device, right? So if this process is being driven by Intune, does the key get stored anywhere with Active Directory by default, or is it only going to be up with Azure Active Directory? It depends on how, if you, you can't, you used to be able to, you, I think you still can actually save your keys directly to the computer object in Active Directory. Um, so if you have policies that are telling, like on-prem group policies that are telling it to do that, um, I'm not, 100% sure what would happen with those two conflicting that way. I would imagine you get the key in both places. So I would recommend if you have, um, if you are doing, if you are saving it to a computer object today, um, turning those off. There's a migra there is a migration path um, or a migration process to move your keys from one location to another, including importing them into uh, Intune. I know, Rick, you've done some of that in the past, haven't you? Yep, absolutely, and and you're right. It's a it's recommended that if you're going to uh, store them in Azure, to not store them in both places. And the uh, the tricky part there is then you need to make sure you align your um, uh, policy, your BitLocker policy that is in Intune with your group policy BitLocker settings, because they need to be uh, exactly the same. Otherwise, you're going to have some problems migrating those keys. That's right. Migrating keys can be rough. And of course, no sooner than I rebooted did it say that it had succeeded with applying the policy. So go figure. But we're almost back here. Yeah, to your to your last question, Chris, if uh, by default, if your cloud 
cloud native, right? It, it's just going to ingest them to Azure AD, um, which is the long term path that Microsoft is going down, trying to avoid having it uh, backed up locally. However, if you are if you do have your policies aligned or you are already starting to use BitLocker on premises, uh, you can ingest them into both spots and then start to traverse over. They can they can exist in both places. It's just uh, things have to align. Um, you can run into you can run into some weird issues. Um, there's some features that are not available on prem like key rotation uh, that are available within the Intune service in Azure AD. All right. Well, lesson learned here. Should have ran updates before we started this process. <laughs> well, here's a another question. Again, maybe you did mention this, and I just got very poor short-term memory. But uh, Windows 10, you t you covered the versions, but licensing. Do you? require a Windows E5, Windows E3? What Are there any specific licensing requirements that you're aware of to be able to use BitLocker? You've got to have an E3 or E5 license, um, and you've got to have Azure AD Premium, uh, a P1 or P2 license for that. Um, you can, if you want to say, plus your device has to be enrolled at Intune for, all of, for, uh, for you to be able to save your keys there. Those are your basic requirements. Okay, but you don't need. You could use BitLocker without Intune. Technically, you just wouldn't sure. manage your keys and the policy. So the feature itself is Windows dependent only. Correct. Okay. Almost done here. Sorry about this all. get signed in here. So now that we're back, okay. So we know that that policy is applied, and we got a bunch of stuff popping up here. So, you know, of course, it's going to reopen all the windows I just had, which is fine. Alright, 
So we know that the policy has applied to the device because it's showing succeeded. So it's just going to take another minute for that. Uh, but once you, once that key is saved, and it most likely has already saved it to it, uh, we can look at uh, go to the device. Look at our Windows devices. Look at that device. And right here we have recovery keys. And as you can see, it's created a second one. This is from my earlier uh, trip, but it's pre-saved the uh, recovery key here. So in order to get to that, it's just under devices. Um, so you just go to Windows, click on your device, and click on uh, endpoint, or sorry, recovery keys. And uh, you'll see which key uh, is available. Any key that you had for like your fixed drives like we talked about, or um, your USB drives, C drive, all of that, all those keys are going to be uh, are going to be saved here. So, if we're doing some troubleshooting, there are a few different places that you can go to kind of see um, if BitLocker is working or not. As you can see, now we've got our little key uh, over the di over the uh, disk here under this PC. You can see that the and it's encrypted and it's running and doing its thing. So one place you can check if you're not sure if encryption is right or not, you can, open, you can pop open the registry. And then you can go to uh, HK local machine, then take a look at, I think it's uh, software, and then we'll go to Microsoft. Scroll on down, go to uh, policy manager. And I believe it is current and then device and BitLocker. And so all of your settings for BitLocker that you have, how you're, you know, all of those settings that apply from Intune will show up in uh, that, uh, that registry key there. Um, obviously you can, uh, another place you can check to see if uh, the disk is encrypted or not uh, is under uh, control panel, right? So, Close all these windows here, and we'll just go to Control Panel. You can take a look at BitLocker Drive Encryption, and uh, you can tell that it's on. And uh, for your security, it's managed by your system administrator. Since it's enrolled in Intune, that's where it's all going to be saved. Another one I like to use, Chris, is if you go to uh, Administrator Launch Command Line from Administrator, mm -hmm. and then you type a uh, manage dash BDE yep. space status. That gives you pretty cool in view of what's going on with BitLocker as well. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, you can see use space is only encrypted. Um, the size of our partition, the BitLocker version we're using, status is unlocked, and if there's key protectors. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you can do a lot uh, with that. I, I, um, you can do the same thing with PowerShell, which is, uh, I believe it's like get dash BitLocker volume. And then uh, the mount, then you just have to specify the mount point, I think. Oh, yeah, helps if you run it as an admin. Yep, you see similar it's TPM encrypted 100%. So we're all you can do this and write. There's a bunch of BitLocker PowerShell commands that you can run for that. Um, but outside the demo, I mean, that's really it. If we were to use one of these uh, keys, then those keys would rotate on uh, after it's used, which is kind of nice because that way, if someone doesn't write it down and go, oh, my machine bit locked again, and they just punch in that key, um, and that helps from a security perspective. So, but that's it for uh, the demo.
So I guess we'll go back to our slide deck here. So I've got another question for you, Chris. You showed that uh, all the settings for BitLocker push down their they're in registry. If someone modifies the registry to try to circumvent or change the BitLocker configuration, will the Intune policy reapply at a regular basis to reinforce what the administrator has configured, or is modifying the registry a way that you could potentially circumvent that? No, that once that, that policy will reevaluate, or if you have a compliance setting that says it's supposed to be set a certain way, that'll all show up. But yeah, it'll overwrite that policy. Um, well, folks, that is that is all we got. So um, any other questions or comments before we wrap up? I don't see anything else in the chat. Great job, Chris. So um, you know, just want to reiterate our schedule for our 2021 series, our endpoint management series. So the goal of this series is to really walk you through from uh, start to finish on establishing a strong endpoint management strategy. And uh, our current session today here is on BitLocker, which is, uh, you know, as you can see here from the schedule, just one piece of all the different moving parts that make up an endpoint management strategy or a solution. So uh, we will be continuing next month in July with uh, diving into autopilot. Uh, so that's going to be an interesting topic on being able to uh, deploy and configure devices remotely. Um, kind of a step away from your, your traditional imaging process that uh, many of us are probably more familiar with. So, um, and all the previously uh, conducted sessions are available on our website uh, at improving.com and uh, we hope to uh, see everyone again in our upcoming session and appreciate your time. Chris again great job. Thank you. Thanks everybody for coming today. Thanks Chris. All right everyone have a good one.